welcome back. Our last guests are a band of bluegrass pickers and hip hop MCs that bring delight, or oh, the delight of standing room crowds, I should say, everywhere. And uh, they've toured internationally, blowing minds on, on main stages from like SXSW to Gray Fox, uh, bluegrass festivals. And they've been doing this for decades, taking advantage of the improvisational aspects of both hip hop and bluegrass. And with their latest release, No Time for Enemies, they've been sweeping the charts and well, they're here to share some more. Please welcome members of the Gangsta Grass Group vocalist, Dolio the Sleuth, our son, the voice of reason, and vocalist, guitarist, and beats master, wrench, the mastermind. (sighs) (laughs) Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you for being here with us. No doubt, no doubt. Thank you for having us. Happy New Year's to y'all. And a happy Three Kings Day. Yeah. Thank you for that. Sure. Thank you for that. Uh, gentlemen, so um, I did a quick brief introduction of what this uh, beautiful fusion that you guys have created, which you, you're you also going to be listening to later on in the show, uh, my viewers. Uh, but let's just talk about how this whole thing even came about. And I, I think we're going to open up with you, Wrench, because uh, from what I understand, you you are recognized as the mastermind, quite the title to walk around with. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Yes. Uh, I grew up uh, listening to a lot of country music because my dad's from Oklahoma. Uh-huh. And uh, I was also growing up in California in the 80s when hip-hop took over. So third grade for me, was about putting down some cardboard to do your backspins during recess to the Beat Street soundtrack and run DMC. And those are the influences that just uh, were going on with me when I became a producer and always wanted to uh, add some some fiddle or some banjo to the beats I was making. Um, a lot of the MCs didn't want to go for that. So I just kind of had to branch out and, and start making it on my own and, and put together a group to do that. All right, so just to be clear, everyone, you heard that he was a hip-hop producer first, being influenced by his uh, upbringing of of listening to country music. And so now, hence, these gentlemen that are part of the group, right? We've got Dolio the Sleuth, so let's talk a little bit about your role as the vocalist. Um, Yeah, I I, I met Wrench when I first um, moved to Brooklyn, Um, I can think back in 03 or so. and uh, we had, uh, ended up in a band together. Um, I was originally the DJ in a, this sort of a hip hop honky tonk thing with him because um, he approached me when um, they were looking for um, a new DJ. They discovered that I also rap. I'm originally from the South, I'm from Florida. So the concept of combining country and hip hop didn't sound too far fetched for me. It was something that um, I hadn't heard implemented this way before. Um, but being from the South, uh, we would watch Soul Train on Saturdays and watch Hee Haw on Sundays. So it was like, okay, it was just bound to happen at some point. Um, once we, it just so happens that this type of music, this fusion is just so much fun to do. It, it's fun to even watch and, and, and listen to and experience. So before we even get into that, let, I, I want our viewers to get to know our son, the voice of reason. Now, how did you become the voice of reason? <laughs> uh, that came up uh, when I was I was at Penn State, um, hanging with, with a crew up there, the guys that really got me into, you know, really trying to make my own music and, and rhyming and stuff. And uh, I was the only one that wasn't drinking, wasn't getting high, to be totally honest. And I was keeping everybody out of trouble. And just in the midst of a conversation one day, one of my guys was like, what do you think, Grant? You're always the voice of reason. And it just kind of stuck. Um, and the R son is just because my dad's name is Richard. Like, it, it's 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 meaningful, but Cat Sink is a whole lot involved in it. You know, my dad's name was Richard, so I'm his son. That's about it. That's um, awesome. I linked up with Dolio. Me and Dee linked up in a cypher uh, up at Penn State. We were just a bunch, of, a bunch of cats hanging out, rhyming outside of a bar. And I was like, yo, this dude is nice. And that was how we met. And we just stayed connected all that time. Um, and when Wrench decided he wanted to take uh, the, the Gangster Grass Project on tour, um, Dolio hit me up and was like, look, my man is doing his thing with some bluegrass stuff. 
would you do it? He sent me one beat, and I was like, oh, yeah, let's make this happen. This is dope. And, you know, this, this was 2011. And, you mm-hmm. know, we've been you know, riding the rails like, like hobos ever since. (laughs) (laughs) I like that. I like that. I like that. So um, just uh, help us understand like what identifies the sound of of bluegrass, because I, I, when I was experiencing it, I I felt that it was certain instruments that kind of dominate, that kind of give you a certain vibe. Yeah, that's an acoustic based uh, genre. You're going to hear fiddles, banjos, dobros, uh, stand up bass guitar, uh, that kind of stuff, and uh, and a lot of harmony singing. They got that high lonesome harmonies uh, in the genre. Um, so you got that. Sometimes it's very fast, sometimes it's very slow, but uh, generally the the, uh, the rhythm section there is holding it down just on acoustic instruments. Um, so it, uh, it comes out of combining a lot of uh, existing genres that were there um, including the you know the folk music of Appalachia, the, the gospel music of the South, um, a whole bunch of influences that came together to to create that. And so I also noticed that you guys are very playful, right? So is this the entire oh, yeah. group? Because I feel like there's more of you. No, there's two more mm-hmm. guys, and our and our and our manager that uh, that wrangles mm-hmm. us together. Um, uh, our banjo player uh, Dan Whitener and our fiddle player B Farrow, um, and it's it is very it is it's it's it is very playful. These these guys are like you know, you know I tell people all the time these guys are like you know extra brothers and you know it, it, it it's it's family family esque and you know we we play we we argue whatever but it's it's a good time and it's a it's a great way to really be sort of doing all of this and getting all of this out to people and, you know, having a good time while we're doing it. Well, you know what? I I was going through your Instagram account and I saw that you guys did like some cute holiday rendition. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I had so much fun. I had so much fun scrolling through it. And, and I do want to say um, that one of the things that really, really stands out for me in, in your unity is how much more of how much more of this we need. Right. Um, uh, today's theme in general has been finding similarities within our differences and to see you all act uh, and, and, and be family at this point, right? You've been together for so many years. Um, and before we even got on air, you even referred yourself uh, to as Bolton, right? <laughs> which obviously you, you, you synced up, right? And, and and that has nothing to do with your upbringing. It has nothing to do with your cultural background. It just it just is. It's, a, it's something that you guys created together. How What would you say to anyone who... Would, doesn't understand the, the fusion uh, and its messaging. I, I would say, uh, because a lot of times we hear that, like when we tell people what it is, they're very, you know, concerned in, in some cases. Uh, <laughs> it's like it's a concern, I feel you. Uh, the important part is, the really important part is, is hearing it, right. right? And listening to what's going on, what's happening, what's being said. And then it also helps to see it. Like it, seeing us live is a whole different experience than um, listening to the to, to, to the album stuff um, and really watching the whole thing happen. Um, because a lot of it uh, is you know uh, you know freestyle rhyming and the solos are brand new all the time and it's just a lot of different stuff happening and watching how it all connects really well every time um it's important to to see that and understand that in in any situation if you have people that are really about what they're doing not only can it be can it be technically good but it can be spiritually good right it really affect you um in a way that you don't expect things to do I, and when it's and something, I, I was, something like this, it's it, it's important. 
I, I thank you for saying that because that's exactly what I felt. And that's why I'm asking this question, right? Because I, I want people to, to explore further, you know, and, and really expand and also look for that, that unity, uh, which is what you, you all represent. There's a unity not only in genres, just in cultures, in race, and everything. And so I love the, the, the fact that it, it doesn't really hold relevance. Yeah, I mean, and as far as the messaging, I think it's more so the fact that both genres, well, hip hop and bluegrass, are heavy into storytelling. Um, they're both they both have this heavy narrative element to it. So we use that as an opportunity to to take stories that connect with uh, people of varying backgrounds, of all ages, of all generations. Uh, because there's, you know, there's unifying experiences um, across those boundaries. Um, everyone, people of all various, you know, races and cultures and ages of, you know, experience hardship, thing, you know, sorrow, poverty, mass incarceration, environmental impact. These, all of these things are things that affect everyone um, in our country and just around the world. So we 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 take these things as inspiration because these are all things that that are lived experiences for us and people in our lives, but also with the people that we interact with as we travel across the country and across the planet, to delivering this message with our music. And to be honest, I like to tell people that we don't do shows; we host celebrations because uh. what this is is it's really just more of a sort of like a party where we're hosting it. We're providing this, this soundtrack um, that gets those conversations started. Because first you're, you're, you're dancing to it, and then you, you, you find yourself listening to what we're saying. You find yourself saying it, and it starts to resonate, you know. I love it. I love it. I love that. I love that you're hosting celebrations and and uh, we done, oh, yeah. we we must hear we must hear something from the mastermind himself. I mean, you must be standing <laughs> beside yourself, just observing and absorbing this family that you formed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know that there's too much I can add after um, these guys put it so well, but we did find uh, once we started playing together that these are these are both just at the root folk music that hip hop and bluegrass came from people getting together who didn't have a lot of resources, finding ways to make music out of what they had, music that they could come together even with strangers and play together. So they have a lot of that in common, improvisational elements, sharing, trading, um, a, lot of, a lot of techniques that actually they have in common. So it was really easy for us to get together and start playing. And we go to, we go to folk music festivals and tell everybody, hey, hip hop is folk music. And it really resonates in, in connecting them with how uh, how that tradition is happening in, in all these genres. Well, thank you for bringing it here to our viewers. We know that this year hip hop celebrates 50 years and, and you guys representing its expansion and of course uh, sustaining its visibility in, 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 in with different audiences. It's a beautiful thing and we're so grateful to you for making the time to, to share it with our viewers. So thank you for being yeah. here. I know we're going to get a taste of it later, you yeah. guys. Woo! And we are also having a lot of fun. We're having yes. a good time and laughing a lot. That's, that's and a lot of joy. That is so what's up. Happy 2023 to y'all. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> I love it. All right, we got Dolio the Sleuth, and uh, we've got our son, the voice of reason, and of course, the mastermind himself, Wrench, and they're going to perform for us when we return. So don't go anywhere. G Gangsta Grass is coming up next.